speaker is Chris Vernon. He's at the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory. Um, and he will be talking about uh, modeling and land use projections uh, with the Demet Demeter the um, um, big Demeter project model. Um, Chris, the Yes, I just unmuted. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, yes, thank you very much for the introduction. And uh, I'm a geospatial data scientist at Pacific Northwest National Laboratory. Uh, I am the task lead for the enabling and foundational capabilities portion of the global change uh, intersectoral modeling system, uh, as well as the lead software engineer for another effort named the integrated multi-sector, multi-scale modeling uh, science focus areas. Uh, both of these are multi-institutional efforts funded by the US DOE's Office of Science uh, as a part of the multi-sector dynamics program area. Uh, first, I would like to acknowledge my co-authors, Praleep Patel, um, and for who has been the, the lead developer of GCAM for over five years now, um, as well as Min Chen and Kate Calvin for their contributions to this work. Uh, so today I would like to talk to you for a few minutes uh, about two models that are developed within the projects that I just mentioned uh, to demonstrate how GCAM and Demeter can be used to incorporate a global integrated human earth systems perspective uh, to modeling land projections. So let's start a little by introducing the models. So first GCAM or the global change analysis model represents the behavior of and uh, the complex interactions between five major systems which are energy, water, land, climate, and the economy. And so they do that at both uh, global and regional scales. Uh, the model simulates changes in these systems for decades moving into the future. And so GCAM uses a, a market equilibrium uh, operating principle where representative agents in GCAM use information on prices, cost, and other relevant factors to make decisions um, about the allocation of resources. Uh, GCAM has its roots way back in the um, Edmonds and Riley model, which was developed in the late 70s and early 80s. Uh, and it's been under active development ever since. So over this time, you know, scientific questions have become more complex and GCAM has also evolved in complexity, uh, transitioning from a focus that, you know, solely based on energy and, and CO2 emissions um, to also uh, an examination of questions at the intersection of energy, uh, water, land, and climate. So the model represents all of these systems in a single integrated computational platform that's written in C++. Um, although some components, uh, like the climate system, for instance, can be uh, ran individually. Uh, this allows insights to be derived that are not possible when conducting single sector or single system modeling. Uh, models such as GCAM are really designed to answer what if questions uh, about the future and, and they really help us to understand how the future will evolve under a particular set of conditions and how the system will change under the influence of external factors. So for example, users can examine the influence of changes in socioeconomics or policy on energy, water, and land systems within GCAM. Uh, the model can also be used to explore the implication of changes in one region on other regions. So GCAM is as well computationally inexpensive, which also enables the exploration of uh, multiple scenarios and large ensembles to really develop a robust, uh, gain robust insights um, given the significant uncertainty within future conditions. Uh, so individual components, uh, models within GCAM were designed to capture the key characteristics of all these underlying systems. However, uh, because its focus is on the interactions among the systems, it does not include the level of detail that you generally find in sector or process specific models. So stepping forward to Demeter. Uh, Demeter is a land use and land cover change disaggregation model uh, that downscales coarser land region projections uh, from GCAM to produce a high resolution gridded representation of land use and land cover. So we can see in panels A and B an illustrative comparison of the coarser regionally uniform GCAM allocation of cropland. Uh, this is for a specific target year as compared to the higher resolution downscaled product that Demeter produces. So the downscaling is accomplished using a geospatial algorithm 
that applies a regional land projection from GCAM to a gridded observed data by intensifying land where it already exists and extensifying land where it is more likely to exist. Uh, so due to Demeter's scale flexibility in combination with the ability to vary scenario level assumptions within GCAM, we're actually able to produce representations of land and how it transitions under different scenario assumptions into the future. So thanks um, for developments uh, by, by uh, publication says it's Chen et al. We're able to actually calibrate key parameters for Demeter's geospatial algorithm to capture the implications of human decision making on land management, as well as being able to provide input uh, for Earth systems models such as CLM uh, to generally explore how uh, the Earth system responds to a variety of scenario driven land representations. And then ultimately, we're able to provide a linkage between integrated multi sector models. Uh, by downscaling global and land projections to gridded irrigated and rain fed crops and other land cover types on a scale required by ESMs or you know, independent research needs. Um, so I want to give you a quick example of this type of modeling in practice. Uh, my co-author Min Chen and others have a paper currently in review uh, describing the use of GCAM to generate all possible shared socioeconomic pathway and representative concentration pathway scenario combinations when forced by five global climate models from the EasyMIP project. So the outcome of this research are data sets that we can provide to the community of global gridded land cover downscaled by Demeter uh, for the period of 2015 to 2100 at a 0 0.05 degree resolution uh, for a five year time steps. So these are generated for each of the 15 SSP RCP scenarios driven by five GCMs, which results in 75 possible GCM SSP RCP combinations. For this research, uh, Demeter used the CLM5 base map to provide output functional land types that are common to many of the Earth system models that are, that are being used today. Um, ongoing work with this will allow us to also use these projections to provide inputs to CLM5 to evaluate the implications of future bioenergy crop expansion on water scarcity under different scenarios through the year 2100. So in closing, uh, I would like to thank Greg, um, first thank Greg, Lynn, and all CSDMS scientists uh, and developers for giving us the time to present this work and continuing to develop, to develop and promote resources that really benefit our community. Um, we also do have plans to create a BMI for both GCAM and Demeter. Uh, we've started uh, looking at and actually implementing those now. And so hope, we're hopeful that in the near future, we can have those ready to go um, and to be used by the CSDMS community. As always, our, our, all of our code is open source and publicly available. Uh, you can find that at those repositories, uh, as well as the projects I described. Uh, they're both available by those two websites. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for uh, giving us uh, time to talk here today. Thank you.